سوری یاسین لیٹس بگن نحمد و نسلی علی رسوله الكریم اما بعد فاؤس باللہ من الشیطان الرجیم بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم رب شرح لی صدری و یسر لی امری وحل الاقتتم من لسانی یفقہ قولی سورہ سٹارٹس وید حروف مقتات یاسین and it's a مکی سورہ the virtue of this سورہ یاسین Al-Hafiz Abu Ala recorded that Abu Huraira radiyallahu anhu, the messenger of sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, whoever recites Yaseen in the night will wake up forgiven and whenever recites Hameen in which Ad-Dukan, the smoke is mentioned, will wake up forgiven. Its chain of narration is good, jayid. Ibn Hibban recorded in Sahih that Jundub bin Abdullah Radhi Allah and who said, Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, whoever recites Surah Yaseen in the night, seeking the face of Allah will be forgiven. Bajhillahi azwa jalla ghufiralah. So most of the people, they recite this surah and there are few things. First of all, it's a Makki surah and the surah has 83 ayahs. And Yasin is named after the, the two opening letter of huruf e that is Ya and Sin. But some of them, they say Yasin is for the Ya is harf e nida and Sin is for Prophet Wasallam. But there is no such authentic narration in that. So it's not a correct narration. And most of the people, they talk about it, Surah al Yasin, like, you know, it is the heart of the Quran. But there is no authentic narration such as that. But one can recite Surah al Yaseen whenever you want. But several hadith are often quoted in connection with Surah al Yaseen. Although none are classified as Sahih, the most accepted among them is the narrated by Ahmad Abu Dawood and Nasai. And it was uh, narrated that Messenger of Allah وسلم, said, Aqrahuha ala mawtakum. Recite it over your dying ones, meaning Yasin. In Arabic word, the mauta is used to, according to specific context, to mean either dying or dead. The first meaning in this case is supported by another hadith, which uses the same word, uh, help your dying ones to say, La ilaha illallah. So obviously, this could not apply to the dead, but only to those on the verge of death. Imam Ahmad mentioned that scholars used to say when Yasin is read for the dying, Allah eased it for him by that. By this he meant that Allah makes the exit of the soul easier. Just as the recitation of surah is said to ease any difficult matter, he also reported in his Musnad from Safwan uh, that they were with the Qudayb bin Harid. Uh, he was dying. He said, can you recite Surah Yasin? So Sahla bin Shurai recited it. So here what we learn, there, there is nothing wrong in reciting Surah Yasin, especially somebody as the verge of the dead bed, because the wording of the Quran, the whole Quran is Shifa for us. It's not particular Surah, but many people, they recite this Surah daily. It's a good uh, habit though, but there is no such authentic narration as, you know, heart of the Quran, but one can recite it. The wordings are so good and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned so nicely and also we learn from this surah that especially the person who is dying, if he learns such a good surah, when he hears this surah, his iman will be uh, more refreshing and more strong. And uh, some of the hospitals, they try to make listen to the patient, the surah, and it helps them recovering soon. But uh, I will mention you again, there is no such authentic narration. Like everybody is sharing their own experience, but experience is different, sharia is different. But in sharia, there is no such thing. Okay, let's begin. So here uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala starts with huruf e muqattad. What is huruf e muqattad? Only Allah knows the meaning of huruf e muqattad. That is the disjoined letters. And Bismillah has been explained 
you know how it will be the abbreviation its complete meaning understood in context you know begin in the name of allah ibn amba stated that messenger of sallallahu of allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam would not know where a surah ended and the next one begin until the revelation to him of the word bismillah rahman rahim so only except surah tauba rest of the surah starts with bismillah rahman rahim and ar rahman ar rahim are two of the allah descriptive names derived from the word rahma rahma is mercy both being intensive form of merciful extremely merciful a double meaning is intended by using both together but rahman is used only to describe allah while rahim might be used to describe a person as well prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam was described in the quran as rahim rahman is above and beyond the human capacity intensely merciful less intensity be understood as something of limited duration allah described himself further as rahim continuous merciful and rahman also carries a wider and more general meaning merciful to all creation justice is a part of his mercy rahim has a meaning of specified specifically specially and merciful to the believers forgiven is a part of the mercy like you know mercy in this world and it will end in the hereafter like forgiven uh, to the person here the two letters from which the surah takes its name are among the uh, you know which uh, which the 14 which occurs in various combination at the beginning of 29 surahs in the quran there has been much uh, meaning like you know allah knows the meaning of the uh, huruf e muqattad and many surahs start with huruf e muqattad but some people when they say uh, like surah al yasin it's like a, uh, here it says that surah al yasin there is no proof for anything like you know uh, calling with harf nida or talking about prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam there is no such thing so here let's begin so surah yasin the messenger was sent as a warner here by the quran full of wisdom so when we talk about yasin and this is the huruf e muqattad wal quran al hakim by the quran that is full of wisdom so quran has so much hikma in it so messenger sallallahu alaihi wasallam was sent as a warner we have already discuss the individual letter at the beginning of surah al baqarah isn't it alif lam mean same thing like yasin and wal well, quran al hakim by the quran full of wisdom means al muhkam perfect which uh, falsehood cannot come to from before or behind it innaka la min al mursalin you are truly one of the messenger of allah so truly you means o oh muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam lamin al mursalin ala siratin mustaqim and you are on a straight path means following a straight methodology and religion and an upright law and here later it mentioned tanzil al aziz ar rahim the quran being revelation from almighty merciful sent down by the almighty merciful means this path which you have been brought as a revelation from the allah the most merciful to his believing servants this is like the aya in the quran which is surah number 42 and aya number 52 and 53 and verily you are indeed guiding mankind to the straight path straight path the path of allah to whom belongs all that is in heaven and that is on the earth verily to allah all matters written so in order that you may warn people whose forefather was not warned so they are heedless here allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned li tunzira qauman ma unzira abauhum fa hum ghafilun so that you may warn a people whose father was not warned and hence they are unaware in this ayah this refers to the arabs for no warners had come to them before them means the fact that they alone are mentioned does not mean that others are excluded 
just and just as mentioning some individual doesn't mean that all others are excluded Uh, we have already mentioned the ayah of mutawattir hadith which states that the mission of prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam is universal and the meaning of the ayah qul ya ayyuhan nasu inna rasulullahi ilaykum jamia in ayah number uh, 158 surah number 7 see o mankind verily i am sent to you all as the messenger of allah like he is sent to all the mankind isn't it that's what it talks about and here when we talk about this is the ayah we are saying like uh, uh, ayah number 6 li yunzira qauman ma unzira abahum fa hum ghafilun here so that you may warn a people whose father will not warn hence they are unaware they are ghafilun but have you seen in the ayah innaka laminal mursalin allah subhanahu wa ta'ala swears in order to remove any and misgiving about the prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam stating categorically and directly to him certainly muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam are from the messengers the statement assume the acceptance by the people of the fact that previous messengers were sent by allah and but this messenger muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam is sent for the all mankind so it means that he will be khatimiyan nabiyin and ibn ammas related that the disbelievers of quraish confronted prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam saying you are not muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam a messenger and allah has not sent you to in this verse allah subhanahu wa ta'ala refute this statement by swearing by the great and precision quran that muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam was indeed from the messenger but if you see this ayah bal quran al hakim and then after that wa is for the by allah is swearing bal quran al hakim there is no doubt about it and again there will be emphasis inna ka in that noon mushaddad is there la is also for taqid laminal mursalin and surely he is from the messenger of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so allah is giving the guarantee he is the messenger of allah and then it was mentioned ala siratin mustaqim on the straight path on a straight and direct path which is defined by allah and explained by all of his messenger the way of submission to his will the path of allah to whom belongs the heaven and the earth as siratul mustaqim the straight path is further explained in surah al fatiha sirat al ladina an amta alaihim ghayri al maghdubi alaihim wal dalin the way of those whom you have blessed not of those who have evoked your anger nor of those who have given astray the nature of this message brought by all the prophets is uprightness and straight forwardness its truth is clear with obscurity and no supposition bending neither with human whims nor with the temporary worldly interest so the straight path various commentators have designed its meaning as islam the sunnah of prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam following the book of allah that is quran and obedience to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala acting in uh, obedience to quran and sunnah all the essential uh, things has been mentioned and tanzil uh, tanzil al aziz al rahim this revelation of almighty and merciful quran is the guide for those who seek to follow straight path it has been sent down to mankind by aziz the one who has power over all things and could certainly have forced all men to submit but allah never forced the people yet he is all also ar rahim specially merciful beyond his general mercy to all creatures so those who believe in him and who follow his guidance so here in ayah number 6 we see li yunzira qauman ma unzira abahum fa hum ghafilun that you may warn a people whose forefather were not warned so they are unaware muhammad bin abdullah radiyallahu anhu was raised among the people who had known no other prophet since the time of islam ismail al islam although they had not completely forgotten allah the arab worshiped him superficially usually associating partners you know doing the shirk all the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam was sent to the whole of mankind 
he naturally had to begin his invitation to allah with his own people initially with his own family ibn abbas related that when prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam like when allah revealed this ayah wa anzira ashiratakal aqrabin and warn your nearest kinsmen so the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam mounted a safa call, calling out to assemble the people and then said to them would you believe me if i inform you that enemy horses were atop the mountain waiting to attack they said yes they reply yes he said then believe that i am a warner to you of a severe punishment to come at that his uncle abu lahab snapped is it for is this is that you have gathered us like you know he is asking he was a arrogant person may you have loss and destruction all day long that was he started cursing at that allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed tabbat yada abi lahab yawm tab surat na lahab and then he abu lahab be destroyed and destroyed is he to the end of the surah surah al masad allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned clearly how he will be destroyed and when the four mention was revealed aisha radhiyallahu anha the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam arose and said o fatima daughter of muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam safiya daughter of abdul muttalib o sanna of abdul muttalib i cannot avail you before allah at all but you can ask me of my property that you wish and abu huraira reported that he called out o people of quraish save yourself from the fire O people of Bani Kaab, save yourself from the fire. O people of Bani Hashim, save yourself from the fire. So he was calling that. O people of Abu Abdul Muttalib, save yourself from the fire. O Fatima, daughter of Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, save yourself from fire. So there is no doubt that message of Islam was never meant to be limited to Arabs. Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam made it clear that he was sent to all mankind, black and white, Arab, non-Arab. he sent messages of warning and invitation to islam to the rulers of neighboring nations and empires and uh, in quran allah ordered him to say qul ya ayyuhan nas inni rasulullah ilaykum jamia o people truly i am a messenger to all of you and furthermore he said wa ma arsalnaka illa kafatan lin nasi bashiran wa nazira and we have not sent you except exclusively to all the people as a giver of good uh, good news and a warner so here unawareness ghafla is a serious ailment of the heart isn't it ghafla blocking its natural function of perception and response to truth and righteousness it often takes a shock of some sort to initiate an awakening and it pro a uh, appropriate treatment for a people unaware of the consequences of their behavior is the warning that they are in danger so when we talk about this aya this is very important like you know when they are in ghafla li li tum zira qaum ma unzira ba'uhum fa hum ghafilun say o oh mankind like uh, Uh, as mentioned in the surah number 7 and ayah number 158 qul ya ayyuhan nas inni rasulullah ilaykum jamia o mankind verily i am sent to you all messenger of to all the messenger of allah so indeed word has proved true against most of them so here laqad haqq al qawl ala aksarhim fa hum la yu'minun the word has indeed come to about most of them so they will not believe before that you know when we talk about ghafla negligence and laq uh, and talking about ghafla allah subhanahu wa ta'ala here mentioned about warning the people qawma ma unzira and warning them and whose forefathers were not warned and hence they are unaware they are in ghafla if you are in ghafla if you are unaware you don't know what you are doing and simply you are wasting time and here i number 7 laqad haqq al qawlu ala aksirhim fa hum la yu'minun the word has indeed come true about most of them so they will not believe already the word has come into effect upon most of them said so they did not believe the word here refers to the decree of allah barely like the same that is mentioned in surah as-sajda 
لا املن جہنم انا من الجنت والناس اجمعین سرٹنلی شل آئی فل ہیل فائر وتھ جن اینڈ مین آل ٹوگیدر اللہ سبحانہ اللہ تعالی از سینگ دیٹ اٹ از ا انڈیکیشن اف اللہس نالج دیٹ موسٹ اف دا پیپل ہوز فرسٹ ہرڈ دا ڈیوائن میسج وڈ ریجیکٹ اٹ اینڈ ڈائی ان اے اسٹیٹ اف کفر لائک ان ڈس بلیف دیر بائی برنگنگ پنشمنٹ اپون دیم سیلف This is because he is fully aware of all aspects of his servant's nature, attitude and potential. He knows with certainty what will be the response of each soul to the Prophet's warning. It should not be taken to mean, however, they were helpless victims of divine degree. As the fatalist would have us believe for Allah's knowledge of what will be in the future. in no way implies he compels one to a certain direction or deprives him of the freedom and thus of responsibility exalted so here in reality allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has will for mankind for the jinn as well freedom of choice in matter of iman in belief in many decision concerning various courses of action open to the individual man is taken to account only for that which is subjected to his control so those who die without incurred responsibility like you know young children or mentally deficient or exempted of blame whenever human will is impaired responsibility diminishes therefore allah has not ordered anything that man does not have the ability to carry out he has not prohibited anything that is helpless to avoid since man himself is unaware of his own future and his destination in the hereafter it cannot be said that divine knowledge has any effect upon the decision of makes during its lifetime when prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam was asked whether there was any use in performing deeds since one place in heaven or hell has already been decreed he answered work for everyone is towards for which he was created then he recited fa amma man ata wa taqa wa saddaqa bil husna fa sayunsiruhu lil yusra wa amma man baqila wa staghna wa kazzaba bil husna fa sanyasiruhu lil usra those who give our conscious of allah and believe in the good reward we shall ease them towards ease but as for those who withhold what they have consider themselves self sufficient and deny the good reward we shall ease them towards the difficulty ibn kasir pointed out that when one intends righteousness allah reward him by helping him to release it when he intends evil allah leaves him to his own devices certain words of prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam although clearly perceived by his contemporaries have been grossly misunderstood by later generation they are part of an authentic hadith related by ibn masud about creation within the womb how the angel blows a soul into the fetus and is then ordered to write down four decrees concerning that person his provision sustenance on earth his life span his deeds whether he will ultimately be happy or unhappy in the hereafter the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said by allah other than whom there is no deity means not doing shirk indeed one of you may do the deeds of the people of jannah until he is only an arm's length away then he is overturned or overtaken by the decree so he does the deed of the people of hell fire and enters in the hell fire astaghfirullah and one of you may do the deeds of the people of hell help i until he is only a arms length away then he is overtaken by the decree so he does the deeds of the people of jannah and enters in the jannah alhamdulillah so there are several points to be clarified concerning this hadith it refers to a possibility one might or could do as mentioned there in but in usual pattern of human behavior it is recognized that men do not suddenly change at the end of the life although it does happen occasionally 
it can be one exception but you know you will be doing what you will be doing the whole life and your end will be that way allah does not judge a person solely according to his own divine knowledge otherwise it could be claimed that there is no evidence to convict the guilty a student would not readily accept the judgment of his teacher that he had failed a course in which he had not been permitted to take the required examination evidence can be brought justly against or in favor of particular soul only by its own witness by that of others concerning actual occurrence the fact that a person who has lived a life of wrong doing or doing disbelief can repent can change himself even in the last days thereby gaining forgiveness and entrance into jannah points to the great generosity of allah in his acceptance of such a servant and it shows that one should never despair of the allah's mercy the case given of the opposite possibility of one entering hellfire after having lived most of his life in righteousness is a warning to every believer to be on ground against such an occurrence you know don't think oh i am a righteous person my and you can request allah subhanahu wa taala you can ask never do riya in such things you know just as one is capable of changing uh, from evil to good and is rewarded for that he is also responsible for keeping himself on right path by not depending upon past data sufficient for him and consequently relaxing his discipline and further by intending and continue to work hard for the acceptance of allah seeking his assistance in goal up until the very last breath of his life he will die in a state which is pleasing to allah subhanahu wa taala we ask allah we request allah to make the best of our deeds the final ones and you know other in the article of faith all things are predestined by allah who says wa ma tashauna illa an yasha allah and you do not will accept that allah wills this means that allah wills one most make a choice in particular matter he knows beforehand what the servant will choose he wills whatever choice is made by servant whether right or wrong choice itself is made freely without compulsion from allah subhanahu wa taala human is responsibility is established so there are those who claim that allah wills a thing then he must approve of it but they are mistaken but for what he what he likes and not necessarily the same way example fa inna allah la yuhibbul kafirin inna allah la yuhibbul mu'tadin allah is saying that you know if you see the different surahs of the quran wallahu la yuhibbul fasad la don't like fasad corruption allah don't like mu'tadin aggressor allah don't like kafirin disbelievers wallahu la yuhibbul zalimin unjust people innahu la yuhibbul musrifin allah don't like extravagant inna allah la yuhibbul qainin allah don't like traitors innahu la yuhibbul mustaqbirin allah don't like arrogant people so allah has will the existence of all this yet as the ayah shows he does not like any of them he has ordered believe in and obedience to himself yet he has also will the occurrence of disbelief and disobedience which anger him concerning human choice allah has accordingly made known his own pleasure or displeasure he has issued warning and also he has sent the guidance through different prophets and especially last prophet prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam as for those happening beyond the servant's control the believer can take comfort in the fact that they too are predestined and willed by just and merciful creator allah subhanahu wa taala trusting allah knows best as to where true benefit lies the servant can expect great reward for doing sabr in hardship and difficulty ma asaba min musibatin fil ard wala fi anfusikum illa fi kitab min qabli an nabaraha in zalika lillahi yasirun 
here Allah says, no misfortune strikes upon the earth or within yourself except that it is in a register, Kitab al It is registered before you. We bring it into being. And also indeed that is easy for Allah. It is very yasir for Allah. In order that you will not despair. Do not be despair. What has eluded you and not exult in pride. Don't be pride. Tafarrahu. And what he has given you. Bima atakum. What Allah has given to you. And in ayah number 8. Inna ja'alna fi anaqihim aghlalan fahiyya ila aza azqani fahum makmahun. Indeed we have put shackles around their necks which are up to their chins. So their heads are kept aloof. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala continues with the description of those who have deserved his decree against them. Their heads held high in pride, disdained, have been logged into the position by shackle of stubbornness. You know, this the position will be like shackle in the, like, you know, when you want to uh, have something in your mouth, how you put it. The same way when you uplift your forehead, the way that will be the position of shackle of stubbornness which prevent them from submitting to the truth. Aglal refers to the device used to restrain prisoners. It consists of an iron collar to which the hands are secured under the chin. Obviously, when confined in this position, one is unable to lower his head. You understand? You are confined in such a position, you are unable to lower your head. Even in the humility to his Lord, Unable as well as to see except in one direction. He cannot discover much of the truth around him. With his hands chained to his neck, he cannot reach out to benefit anyone at all. Such is the prisoner of his own arrogance. Those whose heads are held up in the position called Mokhmahoon. The same word is used for the camel which refused to drink stubbornly, thrusting its head into the air psychologically state picture so aptly in this and the following verse is an attitude of conceit hard heartedness and considering oneself superior you know this type of personality will not accept guidance therefore cannot be guided if you see this i number eight how they are raising their chin and they are thinking themselves something uh, great of themselves so if you think yourself you are something great, so how can anybody have the state of those who are decreed to be among the doom? Allah says in the case of those who are decreed to be among the doom, when it comes to the matter of being guided, we have made them like a person who has chain around his neck, whose hands are tied together beneath his chain and his head is lifted. As Allah says, Fahum muhmahoon. Their heads are raised up, mentioning the chain around the neck is sufficient and there is no need to mention the hands, although they are referred to by implication. Al-Awfi said, narrated from Ibn Abbas, Bailey, we have put their necks iron collars reaching to the chins, so their heads are raised up. This is like a ayah, wala taj al yadaka, and let not your hand be tied like a miser to your neck. This is in Surah number 17, Ayah number 29, meaning that their hands are tied to their necks and they cannot stretch them forth in order to any good deed. Fahum mahmahun, so that their heads are raised up. According to Mujahid, it means their heads are raised and their hands are placed over their mouth. So they are restrained from doing anything good. And we have put a barrier before the Mujahid said between them and the truth. And a barrier behind them. Mujahid said between them and the truth. So they are confused. Fatada said they move from one form of misguidance to another. And we have covered them up, means we have blinded their eyes to the truth. 
so they cannot see means they cannot benefit from goodness or be guided to it. Ibn Jarir said it was narrated from Ibn Abbas radiallahu for a shaynahum instead of fakshaynahum from al-asha the weakness of the sight and blindness which is the complaint of the eye so here we see Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned wa ja'alna min bayni aybihim saddam wa min qalfihim saddam fa aghshaynahum fa hum la yubzirum and we have put before them a barrier behind them a barrier covered them so they do not see the overall picture of total helplessness is now complete those who reject the faith are confined by the barrier of their own prejudice and misconception unable to benefit from the lessons of past or from the experience of the present blinded against the truth and the reality they will never change their course however dreadful is their condition ikrama related that his father abu jahal had threatened when i see muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam i am going to do this and that then allah reveal indeed we have put shackles around their necks up through the world so they do not see they pointed out to him there is muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam but he could only say very see very see i do not see him in the in his sira ibn hisham narrated that the leaders of quraish were assembled at the night outside the house of prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam waiting the moment to carry out his assassination but allah warned him of their plan while they sat in wait the messenger of allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam came out taking a handful of earth and sprinkling it over the heads of the would be assassins he recited the ayah and we have put before them a barrier to the end allah turned their vision away so they did not see him to whom prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam and they remained no man among them whose head was not covered the earth then the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam by passed by them and went to the house of abu bakr from which they escaped to the mount thor wasawa un alayhim a anzartahum am 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 lam tunzirhum la yu'minun and it is all the same to them whether you want them or do not want them they will not believe so these people are such that no warning can move their hearts here is a consolation for prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam who was often saddened by his own people rejection of allah's message and subsequently for those who do dawa efforts do not always bring the desired result isn't it the denial of clear guidance by an servant is put a penalty for previous sins and attitudes that have reached a point of no return they no hope for righteousness remains because in effect situation in which servant uses his free will in rebellious manner there by closing door to his own salvation it is against in the other fi qulubihim maradun fazadhum allah marada there is illness in their heart so allah has increased them in illness so here uh, allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said wa aqabuhum nifaqan fi qulubihim so he penalized them with hypocrisy in their hearts qulubihim ila yawma in their hearts until the day they shall meet is because they failed allah in what they promised him and because they habitually used to by bima kanu yaksibu and fama zaqu zaqu allah qulubihim and when they turned away allah turned their hearts away so here till i number 10 we did it let me do a quick review till uh, i number 10 so here from uh, from one i number 1 you see it starts with huruf muqattat 
and we have discussed there is no such narration authentic narration as it's the heart of the quran the only thing we learn that you can recite this surah anytime you want especially the people they recite at the time of the death but there is no such authentic narration but one can recite because it is the part of the quran and allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says the yasin wal quran al hakim and this is full of hikma it did this quran is full of hikma full of wisdom and we have seen there are three emphasis here wow has the emphasis and also inna moon shadda has emphasis lam has emphasis so allah is uh, giving the uh, emphasis with the three um, uh, like you know here uh, in the three ways with the kasmiya with the lam taqid and nun mushadda and allah says he is the messenger of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and i uh, didn't mention there is one more thing there is a building which is not complete until unless two bricks are there and uh, there was a narration in that it says uh, those two bricks are prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam if you watch a big palace is there and you see there is a gap and one has to be fix, fix in that and that is our beloved last prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam and allah sent last prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam and that was filled and he was the qatimin nabiyin and no prophet will come now and after that allah said inna ka laminal mursalin you are truly one of the messenger of allah here the conviction allah is giving that this, you are the messenger ala siratin mustaqim and you are on the straight path and tanzil al aziz ar rahim and you know from almighty and merciful and these are the attributes of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala li tunzira qauma ma unzira abahum fa hum ghafilun whenever prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam name is mentioned whether it's nazir or bashir but here nazir has been mentioned because it has been warned not only to them for the abahum for their forefathers also why because fahum ghafilun they were unaware if you are unaware you don't know what's going on so that was we discussed detail and laqad haqq al qawlu ala aksarihim fahum la yuminun but most of the people they do not believe and here when we talk about do not believe we have to understand this was a makki sura and allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent through the wahi and this is like you know allah is consoling the heart of prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam as well as telling to the people of makka you are in the ghafla and you are not believing it and inna jalna fi anaqihim aghlalan fahiya ila azqanihim fahum muhmahun and we have placed iron collar on their necks so they are reaching up to their chins and their heads are forced to remain upward so here we have described you know when you are uplifted your head how it will be anaqihim aghlalan when you are wearing uh, iron collar you are not able to bend your neck why they are not able to bend their neck because they were arrogant every time so allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made them that way so they are not able to bend anymore and fahum muhmahun like you know if somebody wants to bend down their neck they can't that's how their punishment will be wa jalna min baina aidihim saddam wa min qalfihim saddam fa aghshaynahum fahum la yubsirun and we have placed a barrier in front of them and behind them you know one is a uh, collar in their neck and there is a barrier uh, placed in front of them and behind them they are encircled by that and they are not fahum la yubsirun they are not able to see that because they don't want to see the truth what prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam has brought and uh, Allah is saying wa sawaun lahum a anzartuhum am lam tunzirhum la yuminun whether you warn them or you do not they will not believe subhanakallahumma bihamdika nashhadu an la ilaha illa anta nastaghfiruka nastaghfiruka wa natubu ilaik assalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh